Hi, everybody. This is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor, and welcome to this BCI podcast, number 15, titled Strike Price Selection When Selling Cash Secured Puts. And we're going to evaluate this topic with a real life example using World Wrestling Entertainment Inc., which trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol WWE. Now, uh, when we sell a cash secured puts, we have to first determine what is our ultimate goal. Is it to generate monthly or weekly cash flow? That's what it is for most put sellers, but not for everybody. Are we looking to buy a stock at a discount? We could sell an out of the money cash secured put, and if it's exercised, we can then own that stock at the put strike minus the put premium much lower than current market value. So rather than setting a limit order to buy at a lower price, we can sell a cash secured put out of the money. And uh, if it's not exercised, well, we got paid not to buy the stock. And if it is exercised, well, we then purchased the stock at the price point that we're interested in. Now, the third approach to selling puts is we may want to use it in conjunction with covered call writing a strategy I refer to in my books and DVD programs as the PCP strategy, put, call, put, where we first sell an out-of-the-money cash secured put, and if exercised, we then write a covered call. So each month, we're either generating cash flow or we're buying a stock at a discount. So identifying our goal is very critical in order to help us how we're going to establish our put selling trades. Now, Back in September of 2018, if we looked at a price chart for WWE, it would be a thing of beauty. We'd see an uptrending price over a long period of time with the 20-day exponential moving average higher than the 100-day exponential moving average. And that's a positive because we always want to see the more recent prices higher than the older prices. We'd also see that the price bars or candlesticks are at or above the 20-day exponential moving average. So from a technical perspective, this is the perfect stock to sell a cash secured put if the calculations meet our stated goals. So at that time, we went to the option chain, looking at the 10-19-2018 expiration, which was 25 days out from when the trades were entered. Now, with WWE trading at 92.68, we looked at three strike prices. First, the deep out of the money 85 strike. Now, you remember a put strike is out of the money if it's lower than current market value. So from 92.68 to 85, the 85 strike was deep out of the money, and that generated a bid price of 95 cents. Now, the $90 out of the money, but not as deep out of the money, strike generated a bid price of 215. And the 95 in the money, higher than current market value, had a bid price of 450. And that makes sense because in the money strikes have an intrinsic value component that out of the money strikes do not have. So you have the time value plus the intrinsic value, and therefore the premiums are going to be higher. Now, we took this information and fed it into the BCI put selling calculator. And the initial return on our options were 1.13% for the deep out of the money 85 strike, 2.45% for the out of the money 90 strike, and 4.97% for the in the money 95 strike. Now, the only time the 95 strike would not be exercised is if the price of WWE moved up from 92.68 to above that 95 strike. So that is not a definite. It's a possibility, perhaps unlikely, but it's still a possibility. So in order to generate that 4.97% unexercised return, price of the stock would have to move up above the strike, thereby leaving that 95 strike out of the money. Currently, it's in the money. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the pros and cons of each of these strike prices now. The 85 deep out of the money put strike had the lowest risk of exercise. 
In order to be exercised, the price of WWE would have to move below the strike of 85. So it would have to move down by more than $7 in 25 days. All right, it's unlikely, but it's possible. So it has the lowest risk of exercise. Now it also requires the low amount, lowest amount of capital outlay to secure that put. The amount that the broker will require is the put strike, in this case 85, minus the put premium, and that resulted in an outlay of 8405. That's the lowest of the three strike prices because we're starting with a put strike that's the lowest. The unexercised return, if WWE does not move below 85, is 1.13%. And for a 25 day trade, that annualizes out to 16.5%. Not so bad. Now, if that put strike is exercised at 85, we purchase the stock at 85 minus the put premium, which represents a 9.31% discount if it's exercised. And that is uh, the greatest discount of the three strike prices. And it also has the lowest break even, which is 84.05. So you can see some of the pros and cons. It, it is the lowest on exercise return, but it requires the least amount of capital out, outlay, and it also has the lowest break even. Let's next turn to the 90, also out of the money, but not as deep out of the money as the 85. And that one has a moderate risk of exercise. Price of the stock would have to move down about two and a half dollars. And then if, it, if that's what it is at expiration, then the put option would be exercised if we take no action to buy it back. That requires 87.85 of capital outlay, higher than the other one, but not as high as the Next strike, we're going to evaluate the 95 in the money. The unexercised return, if WWE does not go below 90, is 2.45%, which with the 25-day trade annualizes out to 37, 35 rather, 0.73%. Okay, once again, that's higher than the 85. It will not be as high as the unexercised in the money strike. Now, if the put is exercised, Okay, um, if the price drops below 90, then we will purchase it at a 5.21% discount from current market value. And it lowers the break even to 87.85. Okay, not as low as the 85 and um, lower than the 95. All right, finally, let's go to the 95 in the money strike. This one has the greatest risk of exercise, right? Because in order to avoid exercise, the price, assuming we don't buy back the option, the price would have to move higher and above that 95 strike, thereby rendering the 95 strike out of the money. Currently, it's in the money. Now, this may be a strike we would consider if we wanted to buy the stock at a discount and own it as quickly as possible. That would be a scenario where we would want to use the in the money uh, 95 strike. It also requires the highest amount of cash outlay, okay, 95 minus the uh, put premium, which is 9,050 per contract. Now the unexercised return, if the price of the stock moves above the strike price, is the highest, 4.97%, which annualizes out to 72.6%. Percent. Again, uh, it's a possibility, but it's unlikely because the price of the stock is going to have to move higher above that 95 strike. If the stock is purchased due to put exercise, it'll be purchased at a discount of 2.35%, the lowest of the three. But if we're anxious to get it into our portfolio, we may consider this 95 in the money strike. And our break even is lower to $90.50 which is the highest among these three strike prices. So each strike has its pros and cons. We just have to match up what our strategy goal is and our personal risk tolerance. So let's summarize. Strike selection is based on our market assessment and chart technicals. How bullish are we? If we're very, very bullish and we're selling a put, we may want to come closer to an at-the-money put strike. 
If we're bearish, we're gonna go deeper out of the money to get additional protection. We have to also know what our personal risk tolerance is. You know, we're gonna be more aggressive, we're gonna be less aggressive. What are our strategy goals? Now, my goal is initial time value return on exercise of two to 4% a month. I'll go up to 6% in a very strong bull market, but never higher than that. So by understanding and measuring and identifying and stating what your initial time value return goal range is, you'll be able to get to the correct strike price for your strategy style. Now, cash flow is normally the main goal for put sellers. And uh, when that's the case, of course, you're going to favor out of the money puts and the strike price will be dictated by your goal in terms of initial time value return. So you have to be able to identify these things, know your risk tolerance, and then from there, it becomes quite easy. Now, for those of you looking to uh, sell cash secured puts, we have additional educational products on the BCI website, starting with uh, Alan Elman's Selling Cash Secured Puts, the number one selling book on put selling on Amazon. That's also found in our uh, website at a lower price than Amazon. Uh, we also have an online streaming DVD program with downloadable workbook. And uh, the Elite uh, Put Selling Calculator, uh, which will give you the returns that we discussed in this podcast, is also found in the BCI store. So all those educational products are on www.thebluecollarinvestor.com and just look for the store link. So ladies and gentlemen, that ends BCI podcast number 15. I want to thank you all for taking the time to listen to this podcast, some of you watching it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, I hope you benefit from it. As always, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody. <laughs>